this is how I do my slip knot and tension. So, get your yarn. Ah, guess I got bugged up in the middle of the screen. Get your yarn. Let the the end in your hand, the, the right hand. It's your working yarn, which is coming out of your ball of yarn. And your left hand. I usually put it over my finger and twist. And then put my finger, my thumb on where it twists at. Then put my working yarn behind the loop that I just made. And there is a weird hair. Not my hair. <laughs> but I'll do that again. Yarn tail. Working yarn. Over my finger. Twist. Put my thumb on the twist. Get my finger out of there. <laughs> Put the working yarn behind the loop you just made and pull it through. Ta da! Slip knot. Then you put your hook through there and tighten it down just a little bit. You, you want your hook to still be able to slide on it. See? I tighten on just a hair tighter than that, but it can still slide. And then move your yarn tail out of the way. And I just lay the yarn across my three fingers and then over my first finger like that. That way I can control tension with my pinky and ring finger. My middle finger is just there for decoration, <laughs> kind of, depending on what yarn I'm using. But it took me so long to notice that I needed to do this because it just is it's natural to me now. So I forget some people don't know how to do that because I didn't know how to do it at first. But you'll find your own way to do your tension. This is just how I do mine. So I lay it across these three and over my first finger. See? But I like to get it a little closer than that. See how I got my pinky holding it? Yeah. My little tension keeper. Then to start out with, since we're on the slip knot, <clears throat> I usually hold my yarn tail because I got the working yarn right here and then put that over my finger. Then I'll hold the yarn tail with my middle finger and my thumb. So these two are tension. Middle finger and thumbs for the yarn tail. And my first finger is just for to hold the yarn. So I can grab, so I can yarn over easier. So then it's so hard to do it whenever I'm like trying to remember the steps because my hand just does that these days. But then the yarn, well, you kind of want to let the yarn flow like that. Like I'm not pulling very hard at all. Like, you don't want a lot of tension, but you don't want it to be no tension, if that makes sense. So I got my yarn, and then I yarn over, pull through, and to keep my D's about the same, after I do the first one, I usually hold on to it. So it don't shrink. Then I yarn over and pull through again. There's another V. 
going to hold on to right there so it don't shrink. Let's do another one. Sometimes they, they are a little uneven, like my tension on that one was a little bit off. But after you get in the rhythm of doing it, get you some more yarn. This one's kind of a flat spoon, so it doesn't like to center pull at the moment. kind of <laughs> not very good at tutorials but I'm trying yep there's that and to finish off like if you say you're on your very last stitch of your project obviously this is just a chain but you would chain one and pull up that loop to where it shrinks. Take out your hook. And then you would cut your yarn. Obviously, because you, if you're done with it. And then you would just, because this part would be cut already. <clears throat> you would just pull it, pull it on up through there. And tighten that knot down. But I don't want to cut this yarn <laughs> right at the moment. But, yep. Yeah. But, that's all I can think of. But, yeah. Take your non working yarn, which is your yarn, your yarn tail. In your right hand, lay the yarn over your three fingers like that, then over your first finger. That's the tension, but you don't need tension for a slip knot. Yarn your tail in your right hand, put it over your finger, or if you don't want to. Just put your yarn tail, like twist it. Make sure your yarn tail is behind the working yarn. So put it behind, put the loop, the yarn behind the loop. <laughs> and then pull. And that was not even on camera. Saw the yarn tail. Working yarn. Twist, put your thumb right there to hold the twist, and put the working yarn behind the loop, and pull it up through there. Then you got that slip knot made, put your yarn, your, put your, yeah, put your yarn in the loop. <laughs> put your hook in the slip knot, and then working yarn. Over your three fingers and around your first finger. You don't gotta hold tightly, just enough. <laughs> and then hold your yarn tail to begin with. That way you can hold on to your project. I'm just gonna do a few. Okay, a little more than a few. This video is probably going to be all kind of shaky on this weird tripod I got it on. But then whenever you get done with your chain, say that's as long as I wanted it, you would skip the, warm, the loop, your first loop, 
not the one that's, we don't use this one. So you'd skip this one and go on to your second one. Just the top loop. Yarn over, pull through, and then you get two. Then yarn over and pull through two. And that's your first single crochet. I'm going to do that all the way across. If I can, I'm working in a small space at the moment, trying it out. So if the camera gets shaky, it's because I'm I hit the <laughs> tripod, and it's I'm using my phone, so the tripod don't like to hold it. Make sure you get your last loop there, your last chain. And there's that, and then like say this was the end of the project. You would just yarn over, pull through, which is one chain, and pull up a loop, cut your yarn, and then pull that yarn on through there, and tighten that. Versus it'll be a one strand instead of a loop. But yeah. I hope this helped. I really do. So I'm not a very good teacher, but I try. So thank y'all for coming and learning. Hopefully. I don't know. <laughs> Alright.